Hi, it's Ken Hadrick, Dean of the Pi Academy, and this week I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous freeform plum tart with a buttery toasted almond pastry that's out of this world. So don't touch that dial. First of all, I got a question for you. How do you feel about the whole plum thing? If it's sort of lukewarm, I get it. It seems like every time I buy a plum, it's either rock hard or mushy and gross, or it just doesn't taste like much of anything. There's just no plumness to it. So that being the case, I've come up with a couple little tricks to put the plumness back in the plum and get you really excited about making this tart. Let's begin by talking about ripeness. The way to trick unripe plums into thinking that they're ripe is to give them a good soaking in sugar beforehand. So we're going to macerate our slices before we do anything else. Now instead of wedge-shaped slices, which are kind of hard to overlap, we're going to cut our plums so the slices are flat. We'll make them about a quarter to a third of an inch thick, and then we'll put all the slices in a bowl, add about three quarters cup sugar, and then toss them gently and set the whole thing aside. Now, after about two hours, the slices will be sitting in a whole lot of sweet plum juice, and that's perfect. Drain them over a big bowl, put the plums into another bowl, and then mix in the cornstarch with them. Then pour the juice into a two cup glass measuring cup and add two teaspoons of balsamic vinegar. Now that might seem a little bit odd, pairing balsamic vinegar with plums, but the flavor and that little bit of extra acidity really perks up the plums nicely. Next thing you're going to want to do is pour that plum liquid into a saucepan, bring it to a boil, and reduce it by about half. You can just pour it back into the measuring cup to check how much you have. When it's ready, pour it back into the measuring cup and just set it aside. To assemble the tart, roll your toasted almond dough into a circle that's a little bit more than uh, one eighth of an inch thick. It'll probably be about 12 and a half, 13 inches in diameter. Now do this on parchment. I'll show you why in just a moment then slide it onto a large baking sheet. Sprinkle about a tablespoon of cornmeal on the pastry and keep it a little back from the edge. Then start arranging your plum slices in overlapping rows, leaving uh, about a two inch border at the edge. Make it nice and neat, but don't forget this is a fruit tart here. It's not the Sistine Chapel. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, using the parchment paper to help lift, fold the uncovered dough over the fruit Notice how the dough sort of self pleats as you go. Finally, spoon your plum syrup all over the top, but not on the pastry itself. Now bake the tart in the center of the oven at 375 degrees for about 40, 45 minutes until it's good and bubbly, and that'll do it. Transfer the sheet to a rack and cool the tart right on the sheet. If you want to give the top a nice lacquered finish, you can brush the plums with a warm red currant or raspberry jelly. There's lots of ways to serve this beautiful tart. You can serve it alone, you can serve it with vanilla ice cream, or with my favorite, vanilla custard sauce. Now please, do yourself a favor and go make this tart, and then let me know how it works out for you. And once again, if you like what you see here at the Pie Academy, if you like the videos and the posts, I'd love it if you share this link with a friend and help expand our circle of great pie makers here at the Pie Academy. Thanks so much, and we'll see you again soon.